Hi everyone, HFX Prepper here. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the rule of threes. So you typically can go three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food. When it comes to emergency preparedness, your government and most governments will tell you to be prepared for three days or 72 hours to sustain yourself before help can arrive uh, in the case of most types of disasters. Um, ideally, you want to get to a place where you can sustain yourself for three weeks, and I'll explain in a second. Um, so basically, if you think about most um, natural disasters are going to be a localized type of event. It may be a few hundred miles um, in, 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 in radius as term, in, in terms of who's affected, but in most cases it's going to be localized to a state or a couple states or a few provinces and whatnot. And in that case, I mean, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a few days, but help will come. Help from um, state agencies or provincial agencies in Canada, as well as federal agencies. Um, and, and that help will come. It just it just takes time to to mobilize, um, to get everybody in place, and to get something set up so that uh, people can get help, can get food and water and so on. So they ask you to be self-sustainable for three days, which is not an unreasonable request whatsoever. And actually, it's not that hard. Most people in their homes should be able to be self-sustainable for three days without any issues. Um, where it becomes tricky is when you do have a natural disaster. Typically, you'll be uh, without power. Um, if you don't have power in winter, you typically don't have heat for a lot of people. If you're in a rural area like I am, you're not going to have a well because the well runs off electricity. Um, so those are all factors you have to think about. Now when it comes to me saying three weeks, you have to think about, I mean, as recently as 20 years ago, which is not that long ago, there was an ice storm in the province of Quebec that knocked out power for as close to about 40 days for some people. Um, now that's on the extreme side, but it's possible. Um, just about 12 years ago here, we had a hurricane called Hurricane Juan. Uh, came through, it was a category one, like low category two hurricane. Um, and it was the worst storm we had seen in about 100 years. Now that hurricane knocked out power for some people for up to 12 days. Um, that's basically two weeks, right? So when it comes to being prepared, you have to start somewhere. And that somewhere is going to be those three days. And for most emergencies, for most natural disasters we face in this area, three days is plenty. There's going to be enough uh, help from the municipal government, from the provincial government, and from the federal government to, um, to be in place within those three days to get you food, water, shelter, and so on. Um, ideally, I would rather wait something out of my house than have to bring my family to a shelter. Uh, where we're, we're, we're more exposed and we basically leave all our belongings behind and all that. So the first thing to do is to get yourself to a point where you can be self-sustainable for three days and after that move on to three weeks. And you have to think about what do I need to survive for three days in my home? So in, in taking that into consideration, you have to look at what time of the year it is. If you're down south in the U.S., not that big of a deal. The temperature is pretty uh, mild and temperate for most of the year. But someplace like Canada, you have four seasons. And in the wintertime, it gets really cold, um, and you need to think about things like heat. Uh, in the summertime, not that, not, not, not that big of a deal. Uh, but you got to think about, what do I need to do to feed my family for three days? Um, do we have enough medication, if that's a, if that's a con con consideration? Do we have enough water? Um, and even if you have a generator, you want to make sure that you do have enough water to sustain yourself for the three days, because if your generator fails, um, and you don't have any water, then, right, that's that's not good either. Um, so basically, you just have to think about, make a list of what you think you would need to survive for three days, and then expand that to three weeks. Um, and that's that's the case for, you gotta think about stuff like food, uh, you gotta think about fuel for a generator, you have to think about water, uh, medicine, um, stuff like um, uh, leisure activities, because if you've got a family, and you don't have any power, you're typically not gonna have the creature comforts that you used to have, like television and computer and smartphones and iPads and all that. So board games, uh, outdoor activities, stuff that people can uh, stay stay active and keep their minds off what's happening. So those are all considerations you really want to think about when it comes to emergency preparedness. So again, work towards that three days, and once you're in a spot where you can be self-sustainable for three days, that's good. That's your foundation that you want to build on at that point. And from there, I'd move on to three weeks. I mean, you can go on to three months and six months and, and in some extreme cases for years, but really, 
three weeks is kind of the sweet spot uh, because it doesn't require too much an invest too too much of an investment um, and really if you think about most natural disasters or scenarios that we can be faced with in North America um, three weeks is going to be plenty of time for help to come um, so anyways that's it for the rules of threes um, if you guys have any comments I would love to hear them um, so leave some comments if you like this video please like it uh, subscribe I'm gonna try to get some videos out probably at least uh, five five to seven times a week um, so that's a pretty good cadence so if you like this video please subscribe thanks a lot bye